This spring, Focus Outdoors headed to Lake Erie to fish for big walleyes, which Erie is known for. When we were making plans, we were told to get in touch with the people with Island Club at Put-In Bay. And they told us they were the best at helping with the accommodations, and they were right. When we chatted with them, they also informed us about the history of the area, such as first ship-to-shore radio broadcast and the battle that Oliver Perry won, which is commemorated today by a 350-foot-tall column that is a peace memorial. This trip did take a turn for the worse when Mother Nature decided to bring a spring storm in, so we had to do a little indoor work, but we did it with the great people from Reef Runner Lures, which was not only informative, but a lot of fun. So stay tuned for this epic trip to Erie with Focus Outdoors. here focus outdoors tv literally just rolled into town mid-april western basin of lake erie uh, port clinton marblehead area where scott staker's out of uh the owner proprietor of reef runner lures and quite frankly i'm here to get lures information and advice and with that a little history you've told me some of it but i think it's interesting for our viewers is how you got started how it's progressed and, and where you're at today boy you know i appreciate you coming it's good to see you've been a long way from out in the Dakotas to come all the way to here. Uh, but it is. It's the walleye capital of the world. It's big fish time here on area in mid-April. And, um, yeah, I mean, we got started years ago. And, you know, I got started out, you know, with the old creepy crawler sets and hand whittling jigs and just making stuff to catch anything. How and, old were you when you started that? Oh, I think my mom hid my tin soldier mold on me when I was about seven or eight. So okay. we were making lead soldiers. On a, on a burn plate down in the basement okay. and uh, we'd make jigs and and uh, you know actually mold or melt lead on this little so uh, you're melting your soldiers down oh yeah. for jigs oh yeah okay and, well, that's uh, good use yeah and doing that stuff so it make was fish a, not war. oh yeah that's yeah. good it was good but um yeah and we had the old uh plastic creepy crawler sets where you made your own plastic stuff and i don't think they'd sell those today i mean it, yeah, it's bad but um started back then and then um a gentleman wanted to make, um, was making weight forward spinners, making reef runner lures, and and they were, you know, they looked like this, and they were just back in the day here, back in the, you know, late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it was all a, a weight forward casting bite, mm -hmm. and then the water cleared up, uh, things went from a, a casting bite to a more trolling bite, right. and so from that point on, you know, I taught high school biology at the time, coached high school football, still went and guided you know I guided for 15 years out here and saw the changes coming and thought you know what I wonder if I could develop a couple lures that would also you know troll out here catch fish but you know caught a lot of heck because at that time people didn't like trollers and now I they, suppose they looked down their nose oh they, they were it was bad okay. it, was, it was a war um and so since then everything happened that uh you know the crankbait thing started uh, I whittled out some baits um you know, a couple of tournaments were won. Actually, first tournaments were out in, uh, I think, Hawaii, first one. I think you know, uh, was one of them. Yeah. Dude, he taught us about our suspended fish. Yeah, and then that yep. started happening and came back here. So, you know, Reef Runners took off, and we've done the color thing ever since. And, uh, you know, I've done very well with that and also regionally specifically done colors.
you know, basically when, when you start out, we start out with something is you, you get an idea. So, you know, I had an idea of making something different, not just a straight crankbait like they've been out there. So we, I, I put a, a pattern down, you know, cut it out on, in wood and basically go from there. You whittle it out a little bit. You know, I've got a lot of stuff in a junk pile that, you know, we've just burned because it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And once you get something pretty much uh, to where you want it, then you can start uh, going to a, um, well, a whittled bait uh, complete. So what we do with these is this is the original ripstick. That's what I found interesting. Um, that I, I didn't want to really catch a fish with it because I didn't want it to pull apart and, you know, but I wanted to see how it ran. So threw it in a farm pond, threw it off the docks, you know, adjusted things a little bit to where I thought um, it needed to be to catch fish. And from that point, take it to a tool builder and then, you know, the excitement starts, the money starts. But it's kind of like farming, you know, you plant a seed in the ground, you hope it grows, mm -hmm. you know, you hope it comes to fruition. How much are you going to get for it? Is the weather going to be good? You know, it's just, I call it lure farming. And then, you know, you, you bring it to a, you know, a mold builder and they make two halves. And once those two halves are complete, um, they, you know, are, we've got some ladies glue them in together uh, with split ring or rings and stuff to hang hooks, rattles and so forth. And then you get a, um, you know, a paint job where they're all hand painted, airbrushed, you know, clear coated, and then we hook and package them. So we've got an array of colors, but there are, there are multiple steps. And people ask me, you know, how long does it take you to make one? Well, it's, you know, it's like, you know, one boat. You can't just make one. Right. You make, you know, one at a time, several times over during the day. So, you know, we might make a thousand um, fire tiger at once, you know, all white, mm -hmm. all chartreuse, greenback. One know. thing you touched on too is this is all domestic. You're not shipping right. this stuff over, you know, and for a lot of you folks, to me, that's important. So if you're overly price conscientious, whatever, there's guys like Scott out here that still truly make this stuff in the United States. You know, just keep that. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels is your full time gun dog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gun dog. We know it takes a well-trained gun dog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gun Dog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gun Dog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. No matter the size, age, or activity level of your best friend, you want a dog food that's natural, feeds great, and is full of all the goodness you demand. That's what we pack into every bag of Country Vet Naturals. Country Vet Naturals are just what the name says, natural goodness in every bag. We also make grain-free cat and dog food and treats. Learn more and find a dealer at CountryVetNaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Well, as you might be able to tell, I spent a lot of time behind a shotgun. Whether it's at the clay target fields, sporting clays, doing exhibitions, or bird hunting, I always trust my shooting skills to the Rio Elite. Not only for the lighter recoil, but as you can tell, the harder hitting, consistent patterns. These clay targets don't stand a chance when you shoot Rio Elite. Make your next day on the water even better with Airwave Pedestal, the only air suspension system that can be custom adjusted to the weight of the rider. No unreliable springs, no oil-filled shocks to leak. Our patented design utilizes a two-stage suspension system to smooth out the roughest ride, a limiting travel to an industry-leading two inches. This boating season, enjoy your time on the water to the fullest. Find out how at airwavepedestal.com. One thing I wanted to touch on is tuning and crankbaits, and quite frankly, I think the reef runners have gotten a bad rap over the years on that. Uh, they're not that tough to tune. You obviously know how to do it, and I'll let you take over 
Well, in, in, in a crankbait's life, no matter who it is, if it's if it's a reef runner, if it's Rapala, if it's Berkeley, if it's you know whoever, every every lure um, has to be tuned. And the hardest part, and the worst thing about um, tuning is a net, a rubber net, and nets, because you got big fish in the net, you got one hook in its mouth, you got one hook in the net, and you're flopping it in the boat, and there goes a torque on the bait, and it's knocked out of tune. And that's something I was going to touch on. Yeah. If, if the lure's catching big fish, it may get knocked out. So that's right. the lure did its job, you just need on, to fix him up. On the floor. So what I look at when I'm tuning the bait is make sure that when you put a bait in the water first, you get enough lead line out, maybe six, eight foot, and you're putting it beside the boat. Don't put it back behind. A lot of people want to put it behind yeah, the boat, you're gonna get and you're going to get in that prop yeah. wash, and it's not even going to be close to exactly. where it needs to be tuned. The neat thing about tuning is you can use you know, a pair of pliers if you want, but a lot of guys tend to think this. So if you've got a crankbait, especially a deep diving crankbait, this eyelet in the front needs to be lined up you know, perfectly down the center line of a bait. So what you do not want to do first is take and grab it with a pair of pliers and twist it. You do not want to twist that thing right or left. What you want to do is make sure that's on the center line. And what you want to do is if the bait is running, let's say, away from you on the boat. So if you're in this side of the boat and it's here and it's walking out away from you, so if it's running to the right, let's say, you very slightly want to take this and just fold it over. So you're really taking this and folding it this more way. More the top half. The top, right. and just folding it this way and bringing it so it runs more Versus to the left. what most guys do, they'll actually put an Cannot, angle into you it. You can't do the angle at and all. And I think that's where a lot of guys come up with the yep. problem. They think, well, I, I just worked on that thing and I could not make it run right. right. Well, you're twisting it every yep. way it's but the right way. it's not this way or this yep. way. It's just it's folding it left or right. Um, and one of the things we've done, we've made a little a, a tool, it's called a tuna fish. And the easiest thing to do, you can put it in your fingers and just lay it straight on top. So once you've got it straight on the top, you can't screw it up. You can't screw it up. So now you've got to go this way or this way. You can't twist it. So now on top, you either bend it a little bit to the right if it's running left, and the left if it's running right. Put it back in the water, pull it, and if you can actually, if you're running one five, two, two five, whatever, pull it gently forward. If it tracks straight, you're good to go. Yep. Now if you put a crawler on it, a little say on a crankbait. You know, always put a crawler or a piece of it on the mm -hmm. bottom hook. Anything you do to change it, make sure you retune it. And every time you put it out, run it, tune it again, make right. sure it's straight, set it back out, and you're good to go. You know, all right, we've been talking about a little history in the past and how you got here, a little lure design type stuff. Basically, I want to talk about present and future because I'm going to hit the water this afternoon, yep. the next few days. And I'm not here just to pump you for lures. I'm here to pump you for information. What's been working for the guys color-wise? Well, I'll tell you what. It's, it's, it's so hard, you know, when you come into a place, you know, and just have no oh, clue. Yeah, I mean, it's blind. Yeah, so bait shops are one good thing. You know, obviously, you know, lure manufacturers that are home lakes right here in their backyard is another. But, you know, you got to have friends, you know, the yeah. networking part of it. But exactly. as a general rule of thumb, you know, the one on the end there is uh, pink lemonade. It's a color we did years ago. Um, still, like one of our top producers, day in, day out, no matter what conditions are. Any part of the country. Any it's, part it's of the country. Yeah, pink lemonade's been great. Um, some dark water situations, and, and even in clear water situations now, will go to anything purples and pinks. Which we've alluded to earlier. Yeah, so that color's purple nurple. Um, night vision with the chartreuse and the black dots is a very good color, you know, when it comes to dark water fishing. And also, you know, we've uh, developed a new color this year, which is uh, Fruit Stripe, which uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike okay. Robertson, gave to me. Um, very good in muddy water. You wouldn't think so. Why? I have no clue because there's no fish stripe like that. No. no. Um, but This isn't a match hatch. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a match one. But that one's very good in muddy water. And also it's uh, white um, zebra, the next one over. And that color came from your way. You know, Lake Oahe out there, they like the whites out that yep. way. So it's a really good muddy water color. Whites are always that good. And if you get a chance, you know, when you get out in the open water, if it clears up again, go back, uh, to, go back to a blue Hawaiian chrome, uh, chrome blue, chrome black, and also, you know, the clear lures. Um, like, this is my favorite lure. If I was going to take one lure on a boat, it's Pearl Ghost. It's got that bare naked insert in it, but it has the white, a little bit of red in it. Uh, if guys want to take, you know, magic markers and mark them up a little bit, they can put extra dots. But, I mean, you know, you can get a blue one, pink one. You can do all kinds of stuff when you have that tape. And it's kind of, um, you know, UV um, 
active where you can get it in sunlight and it's pink and purple, but you get it out of sunlight, it goes to copper and gold. Okay. So other than that, you know, like I said, the pearls, the white, you know, and especially the dark colors and dark water. But, you know, sometimes you have to go just to something as gaudy as you can get and as bright as you can get in the muddy water just to, you know, they hone in on vibration. And I've seen it too. A little on, bit on yep, sound. On a tough day, just throw something helps. goofy out and there. And even some you know. glow. You know, guys got glow stuff and they're putting glow dots on them. Yep. Simple as that, you know, it helps out quite a bit. One thing too to touch on, separate from the color thing, is is the presentation things. Uh, Crankbait speeds, too many people get stuck in the 1 8 to 2 mile an hour and that's a comfort zone and they won't leave it. Right. Out here is a good lesson in pulling things super slow. Super slow this time of year. So we're pulling these crankbaits, these reefers with big bills, down to 1 2, 1 4. And, that's, you know, that, and just creeping. And also, you know, the old lead core hand pump rod too. Yep. When you're going that slow, just grab one rod beside. Pump it forward and just let it slide back. Exactly. Pump it forward, let it slide back. And, uh, you know, even lead core with short build baits like ripsticks or rogues or, you know, uh, husky jerks, stuff like that, um, work real well when you're doing that pull technique with lead core. But uh, a lot of different things. But in the summertime here, if you're not catching fish, our motto is go faster. Mm -hmm. So 2 5, right. 2 8, 3, 3 2, because they're going to hunt On it down. the opposite end. And yeah. that's something I like about your lures, is they'll run at all speeds. And, and out here, like you said, with that big bill, they got that dig, and they're yep. they're they're going to work even and, if it's super slow. Yeah, speed. And, and super slow, and also with a fire line enhances that, and also um, speed wise, depth wise. All right, we're going to wrap it up here. I'd like to thank Scott for all the information and for the years of support. Oh, Scott's I helped me out that. over no. the years, and it's uh, it's greatly appreciated. Oh, no problem. You've done a great job out west, and uh, we don't get out there that often, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to have. Uh, you know, ears and eyes out there, exactly. see what's going on. Yeah, give you a little feedback yep. there. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah. Ah, it's a sheep head or something, ain't it? No. Oh, that guy? We'll get it in if we want something. There we go. Yeah, Will guy. Yep. That officially is the smallest fish I've ever caught on my carry. <laughs> yeah, it's a little guy. It's a start. Midwest Gundog Kennels is your full-time gundog training facility. For over 30 years, we've customized our training to fit each individual gundog. We know it takes a well-trained gundog to handle wild birds to make every hunting trip a dream trip. Let Midwest Gundog Kennels put excitement back into your hunt of a lifetime. Midwest Gundog Kennels, where experience equals excellence. Dakota Pheasant Guide offers the best wild pheasant hunts from the Glacial Lakes area of South Dakota west to the Missouri River. Packages available include everything from self-guided to fully guided hunts. Book your bird hunting adventure now. Fisherman, iTime Promotions is your ticket to an enjoyable and successful day on the water. Call Dennis Foster for your outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Dennis Foster here. I'd like to introduce you to the Drado Catch and Release Boat Latch System. It's back the trailer into the water, pop the cord, and away we go. Once our day in the water is done, we simply roll the boat up onto the bunks until it achieves contact with the bow eye. It clicks securely into place. Away we go. We are exclusive partners with B2Outdoors.com. That's where you're going to want to go and order your very own system. You can enter the promo code ITIME PROMOTIONS and receive free shipping on your items. When it comes to dog food and treats, you want something natural. A dog food or special reward that feeds great, is made in the USA, and helps your best friend live a long and healthy life. That's what you get with Country Vet Naturals, natural goodness in every bag. And for those of you who want grain-free, we've got that too. 
Find a dealer and learn more about Country Vet Naturals dog food, cat food, and treats at countryvetnaturals.com. Country Vet Naturals, loved by pets, trusted by owners. Death under going to four. Been uh, real tough conditions out here. 40 to 45 mile an hour winds yesterday basically could not fish. The water is chalked up severely, which uh, really makes this fishing tough out here. We've done a li little bit of running around and uh, they're just not clean water to be found. We found some water that's cleaner per se. We picked up a couple small fish. This is not a huge fish by Lake Erie standards, 23, 24 inches, but we're getting a little something dialed in here, particularly with one one lure. It's a reef runner lure. Not sure what the uh, the actual nomenclature is, what he calls it, but it's a, a purple head with an orange body. And we're we've got two out. We're going to keep uh, pumping them out. Probably put another one out here. See if we can't get in some big girls.
That fish ate it too. Yeah. All right, we're not going to do a lot of commentary now. We just got things dialed in. We got bad, bad weather coming. We're going to try to keep fine tuning this thing. Put a few more of these in the boat and have a good time. Nice fish. There it is. That's the that's the winner right there. Last two good fish. Both come onto that we might reef run right there. Six of those out before we're set. <laughs> I understand that. Hey folks, we're gonna wrap up uh, this segment of Focus Outdoors TV. We take a lot of pride in trying to show folks the real outdoors, and this is about as real as it gets. We've got gale force winds, uh, western basin of Lake Erie. It's actually driven the water into the western basin at the point that the water levels have risen. I'm sure Brad will show us the dock here in just a minute to demonstrate that. I'd guess a foot or better already, but it is what it is. The guy's got to get out and try. Uh, another thing that we like to showcase if we use the top quality equipment to try to put up with some of these conditions, unfortunately, this is a bit much. With that, we're going to wrap it up and look for a little better situation on our next show on Focus Outdoors. train rolls down the line as I'm headed for the land of corn and rye there is a place I'm always satisfied full of remedies to ease my worried mind like pulling catfish on the banks of Cherry Cove watching